All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, happy to be talking to an individual with a big fight coming up at ACA 122, that top of the marquee bout. It's for the ACA Heavyweight Championship. It goes down April the 23rd. In the challenger position, we have Dimitri Povarezets. And in the champion role, we have Tony Johnson Jr., who's making his first appearance on the show today. How is your day going so far there, man? Yeah, it's going really good. And actually, um, just got finished doing eating some lunch. I did, some, did my conditioning already, so it's a good day. Yeah, and it seems like the conditioning is one of the bigger things you've been able to just figure out throughout your career, just continually weaponizing the pace, seemingly on a fight-to-fight kind of basis. Is that kind of like a fair characterization? Has weaponizing the pace been like a big focus largely throughout the recent years there? It definitely is. You know, I think in the heavyweight division, I believe if you have good cardio, you're going to last a long time in this game. And, uh, you know, when I, when I fought me and Ankle, I fought a couple other guys, I realized, you know, my car is pretty damn good. And I need to use that, utilize that as more as a weapon. So I am definitely, definitely uh, working on that to, to use that and utilize that more as a weapon. Yeah, and I just got to talk about the road to the title here because I find it, you know, very impressive just with the last fight marking that return to the win column after, you know, coming off the L and just being out for over a year. So just with the backdrop of all that, I imagine it was immensely satisfying to get out there and finally capture the gold. So can you kind of put me in that moment and articulate how you were feeling just with the backdrop of that timeline? Yeah, man, it was, it was definitely awesome because, uh, you know, I went for a title previously twice. Uh, first time I got, you know, it was, I, it was a non, no contest because uh, the eye poke and the eye gouge. The second time he ran, you know, I'm like, it slipped in my hands twice, you know, and I, I needed, I wanted another shot at it. And uh, so that fought Ruslan, Mega Madoff, and he kept getting close home because of coronavirus. And then <clears throat> I believe the, I believe it was the fight in July, and then he had gotten hurt, and they asked me, you know, that I want to fight Daniel Million Nation for the title in, uh, in November, you know, because Ruslan hurt. I said, absolutely, let's do it, you know. And luckily, during this whole quarantine, now, they were staying mentally sharp, mentally focused, and keep staying to the gym, staying active, staying, staying active. I didn't let, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't gain a 20, you know, like most people do. Uh, most people have done, you know, being 20, 30 pounds. I, I, I want to stay focused. You know, I want to grind in the dark, as I call it. So I stayed away grinding, and um, the opportunity came, and I see the moment, and I kept telling everybody I was going to knock this dude out. You know, I know he's never been knocked out before, but I, I've, I've trained with some of the best, and I've sparred with some of the best, and fought some of the best out there. You know, and, and I'm starting, I'm believing in myself now. I, I know I can, I can hang in there, and I can go with anybody. I've been hit by the hardest hitters in the game. You know, there's nothing nobody can do to me that I haven't seen. So it was, uh, it was an awesome, awesome win. Yeah, well, that seems to be part of the growth pattern, too, just from what I've seen in prior interviews, just like finally just, you know, feeling that comprehensive realization of where your stand up game is yourself, just like so many training partners telling you where your level was at over the years and just, you know, that finally sinking in and kind of resonating. I imagine that was a huge kind of like breakthrough moment. Oh, it absolutely was. You know, I had some I had people like tell me, hey, man, you know. After I spar with these guys, bro, I didn't know knew you had hands like this. And your hands are good. Your hands are good. I, I spar with Deontay Wilder. I spar with some. I, I did. I, I used to spar with Glenn Johnson back when I lived in Miami. I spar. I, I spar with boxers. I spar with some of the best MMA fighters. Not been able to last, you know, and I've not been able to hold my own. And I'm like, I need to start showing this in the fight, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, I am a wrestler, right? But no one wants to see a wrestler go down, you know, just just take down, ground him down, and and you know. They want to see knockouts, man. That's where the money goes. From. That's, that's where the fans go. You know, they want they want to see that stuff. And I was like, I, I have the power to do this, and I have the hands. My hands are very nice. I said, so I, I have to start showing this. Yeah, well, it just illustrates the multifaceted game because, like you said, a very decorated Division One All American on multiple accounts there. But just with the pro boxing record too, just like a couple of victories to your credit there and everything like that. So yeah, just seeing the development in the hands must be kind of interesting and everything like that, just seeing the measurable results of it, because like you said, first person to stop your last opponent there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was, it's, it's, man, it's, it, it, was, it was a blessing, you know, just, just how it all happened. You know, I, I told, kept telling everybody I was knocking them out, telling everybody I was working on my hands, telling everybody it, it was a different Tony, you know, and, and, uh, and I showed, I showed, I shot, I shot, I shot the world. No, no one thought I was going to happen. You know, so I definitely, uh, I put a spotlight on myself, which 
still good. I, I want that. Yeah, no doubt, man. A big showcase performance. But I got to ask what it was like competing just with the whole no fans and attendance dynamic and the whole you know pandemic going on and all. Like I've heard some fighters say it's kind of weird. I've heard some say it's more akin to like a sparring session. It feels like. How would you characterize it? Man, uh, I'll, I'll characterize it as more as a sparring session. Now, now the thing is this: right, when you know when there's no fans, it's going. It's, you're going to figure out if you're doing this for yourself or you're doing this, you know, for the fans. You know, it's it's like you have no fans rooting you on. I, I liked it because you know I'm I'm in another man's country, right? I'm I'm going I'm I went to Poland to fight the one of the biggest stars. I didn't, I didn't have to fight. I didn't have to fight the crowd this time, so it was it was it was. It was fine. It was okay for me. It was, it was perfect. Um, but you know, it's 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 crazy because you can hear everything. You can hear the punches. You can hear the coaches talking. You can hear the coach. You know, you can you hear everything. It's 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 definitely um, it's cool. I, I like it. I, it doesn't doesn't bother me. But you know what, man? You know, fighting in front of the fans is also cool too. So I you know it's I, I like it. But you know, I, I kind of want to fight in front of the fans. It's, it's, it's fun. It's fun. It's more of a fun ride, man. You know, fighting in front of the fighting from the fans instead of a, a quiet arena. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, man. And I mean, it's not like you're averse to fighting in people's home country anyway. I mean, you fought like Goncharov and Emelianenko and Minikov at home. So yeah, it seems like Russia is kind of becoming the second home in a way. Yeah, yeah. You know, the crazy thing is though, I I have I, I have a lot of Russian fans. Like I could not fought, I've been fighting in Russia for the past five five years now. Like I have I, I've got this respect for Russia. They, they they know when I come there, I come there to fight. You know. You know, and, and I don't back up. I I come forward. So you know, Russia is like my second home now. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might have that Roy Jones kind of dual citizenship status someday, something like that, right? I should, I should yeah, like Roy Jones, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's great that they've embraced you that way, though. But just kind of been talking about this coming fight here. I mean, you've got, you know, quite a challenger here. It seemed like also you were anticipating fighting Ruslan Magomedov just, you know, a bit after your title win there. But then obviously, you know, we saw your upcoming opponent here kind of get the jump on him a little bit there. And just the 15 wins in a row, just a pretty proven knockout artist. Like, what are your thoughts on this upcoming matchup with Dimitri and just kind of what he brings to the table as a martial artist? <laughs> I think he's, he's very dangerous, you know. Uh, no one, I don't, I don't think anybody gets a chance against Ruslan. Um, I, the thing, thing about him, and that's one of the reasons why I, I uh, went to went to go train with Francis Nugano because you know they kind of have fighting. They have they kind of have the same fighting style. Like, they're very similar. Like they they throw heavy, you know. Uh, I, I respect them, but you know I, I know. Uh, I mean, he's not very he does, he's not very dynamic, you know. He's just he's going to he's going to he's going to pressure he's going to throw his hands you know and I know he's on a 50 fight win streak but you know those guys weren't me you know I I, I I'm I, I'm sep- I'm separate I'm separate from those guys you know like I, I'm faster than guy I'm stronger than those guys I'm, I'm more knowledgeable I, my resume is is by far probably one one of the better resumes he's he's, he's probably one of you know one of, one of the better resumes in the heavyweight division um but uh, yeah you know, I mean he, he's dangerous but you know I I believe in myself and I know what I can do. You know, I know I'm not very athletic. It's, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good fight, man. I don't think it's gonna go. I don't think it's gonna last very long. Someone's gonna someone's gonna put the sleep for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I think if there was a prop bet on that one going the distance, I mean, I think the odds would kind of reflect what people are thinking with that there. But you also mentioned working with Francis and Ganu there. It seemed like you were getting in a lot of work ahead of the Stipe rematch there. How long has this training dynamic been going, though? It seems like you've been at Stream, Extreme Couture a little bit as of late there. I was there for a total of four weeks. Um, and, yes, they had contacted me. And they said, "Hey, man, uh, he, he said you'll, you'll be a you, you, you'll be just a good sparring for Francis." So they absolutely come from him, you know, real quick because I realized that you know they kind of Dimitri and Francis are you know fight very similar. And plus, you know, helping help with Francis, it, it's a it's a great opportunity for myself and a great opportunity to network. And it, it was it was awesome, man. It was awesome, and I'm so happy he got the belt. That he we worked we worked really hard, man. I came home. Straight bruises, black eyes. That was not easy. That was not easy training, but it, it definitely was worth it. And him and I are like we're, we're good friends now. We exchange numbers, so um, I will be training for the exchange the tour now. You know, um, and you'll see Francis and I a lot more together training. So um, you know, it, 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 was, it definitely was an amazing trip. 
yeah, and just a bit before you were touching on your resume with guys you fought and everything like that, but also that can extend to some of the guys you've trained with too. I mean, like Cain Velasquez and, you know, Daniel Cormier over at AKA, they're also kind of a past opponent there with, you know, DC there. So it seems like you've gotten training at some great facilities over the years. Like I believe you also worked at ATT at one point too. So just really collecting a lot of great knowledge. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've trained with some of the best. I, I trained with, I used to train with Todd Duffy, Bigfoot, you know, Hector Lombard. Like, I trained with those guys before Black Williams or Black, no, before it was ATT, and then they kind of split in, you know, ATT and Black Williams. So I trained with all those dudes. I trained, I mean, I've trained with Kane, Luke. I mean, I've trained, trained with some of the best. And I've, I've been, I've trained with some of the best, the best, some of the best champions, you know, and, and uh, I'm, 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 every time I'm in there, I'm, I'm able to hold my own. So I know that I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna be okay. I'm going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But it seems like recently, like before the Omelanchik fight, at the very least, you were training out of Nashville MMA, which features certain fighters like Dustin Ortiz. Is that still the training arrangement ahead of this one? Yeah, I mean, I still, I still train. They're still part of my gym. You know, right now they're just relaxing a little bit, you know, with heavyweights. So I'm, I'm just going to be between both right now. So I, have, I just got to go where... You know, where I, I fit in the best right now, which is Exchange Tour. They have Francis, they have a couple other heavyweights. So, just, it's, man, it's, it's hard to bring heavyweights. It's, it's hard to find quality heavyweights. Now I know where they are, uh, that's why I have to go train, unfortunately. Unfortunately, you know, but, but like I said, I, I will always have National MMA, and I'm still, be a, I'm still a part of National MMA. And, uh, uh, you know, I still will, I'm, I'm still going to rip them on my, on my shorts and rest of my home. Yeah, definitely important to do that, no doubt, man. But I'm kind of wondering what the dynamic with ACA is, and as far as like, like what your contractual agreement is. Like, are you kind of locked in for multiple fights with them at this point, being that you're a champion, or how are things kind of looking in that regard heading into this inaugural title defense? I just resigned. I just resigned uh, for three fights. Uh, three, four, yeah, I got, I got three, three fights. Um, I resigned and. December. So yeah, I have been replaced with my contract. So this is uh, this Dimitri fight to be number one under my new contract. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. I mostly ask that with the backdrop of just seeing in you a lot in a lot of these articles where it's like, oh, UFC should sign this guy. I mean, ACA is a great league, obviously too. But I mean, your career has been pretty amazing as far as the different you know promotions you've been with, like you know one championship and Bellator and everything like that. So yeah, cool to see you carving out a further legacy in ACA there, man. Yeah, man, this is the number two organization in the world, and you know, after this, at the ACA, man, it's the UFC. So I'm enjoying my my thing. My whole my thing. My whole career was just take your time getting there, man. Like the, the mistake these young athletes make, they want to get to the UFC because of fame, right? They, they they have automatic fame, man. That's like going from like when you play football. That's going from like high school to the NFL. Like very very few can make that step. Like it's not like. Any, it, you have you have to. There's a lot that comes with it, you know. Like you gotta be matured up to take all the all the the, the crap that comes with it, you know. As in like taking all the grass, doing all these all the media obligations. There's, there's a lot, you know. And I I just want to take my time and enjoy, it, you know. And then when I when I get to UFC, I, I'll be there. I'll make some noise. And you guys can all do all the ride, you know. So my my thing, my career was just take take my time getting there, the right fights, go travel the world, go see what's out there, and then. Last time was UFC, man. So I'm, I'm excited that I was able to, to do that. Yeah, it's a fun career path to follow along with, man. Like I said, I just listed off some great circuits you've been a part of over the years. Former King of the Cage heavyweight champ as well. But yeah, I mean, I think UFC would be a promotion you'd make waves in right away. I mean, especially with the backdrop of having victories over guys like, you know, Alexander Volkov and Derek Lewis and stuff like that. Just guys who are positioned at the top of the division. Right. Yeah, it's... um. I, I definitely, I'm definitely, I, I know, I know when I, when I found UFC, I'm going to be fighting those guys again, you know, um, but I, I'll be ready, man. It's, uh, I, I, like I said, I have those are notable wins. Those guys are both in that top five in the UFC, and, you know, I mean, that, that kind of shows you where I am as, as a fighter, you know. No, I mean, I'll be, I, I, mean, I, I beat these guys, I beat those guys not even, like, training like I was supposed to. Now I'm training like I'm supposed to, man, the sky's the limit for me. Yeah, because I'd seen prior interviews where you were saying you were, I think, half-assing it was the specific wording and everything like that. Like, when 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 was the moment where you kind of turned the corner there? Because I was seeing for past fights, you'd cut down from like you know sometimes even up to like three fifty, sometimes 
in that kind of range? Like, what, was there an epiphany moment or? Yeah, there, there was, <laughs> and that's funny. I was uh, I was going through Instagram, right, and Darren Lewis, his, his Instagram popped up, and like he was working out in his garage, and he was he had like a Ferrari and like a, he had like a Lyft with like two trucks, and like I'm not doing well, like bad. Like I, I make very good money, ACA, but obviously Darren Lewis makes more than me. I thought I thought that like yo, I'll be this dude, and he and he has all this. I got I got some. I, I said I'm not a half ass. I said you know what? Let me put my all on this and see what it takes. You know, and that that was like right before that was, I want to say February of 2020. So right, right with the quarantine. That's why I stay busy during quarantine. I'm like, man, stay active, stay busy, stay busy, stay busy. You know, and something's gonna happen. So yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm. Uh, that was my, that was my epiphany, man. Wake your ass up, go to work, go to work, man. You can have way more than what you have now. <laughs> Well, that's a cool story I find usually with Derek Lewis's Instagram. It's usually good for, like, trippy videos and stuff like that, but good that it's causing some inspiration. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> it, it definitely did. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a cool backstory there, man, and just a really exciting fight coming up here. But usually when I have fighters on, I ask them if there's different genres of music they're kind of partial to training to. Like, are you the guy that's kind of grabbing the aux cord and, like, putting on certain tunes or kind of just, like, whoever puts on whatever, you're rolling with it sort of thing? Man. I, uh, I listen to everything, rap. I, I listen to all that. Because I, you know, <clears throat> grew up wrestling. So it was like Rocky music, you know, all that, yeah. all that kind of type of music, man. So I, I listen to all that. I listen, I'm not a, uh, I don't discriminate, you know. I listen to everything. So, except I don't listen to country. I can't, do, I can't deal with country. But <laughs> yeah. everything else, I, 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 can, I can deal with. <laughs> sort of just depends on the mood and kind of what you're doing that given day, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. That's like if I'm shadow boxing. You know, just like I don't need to like work like move fast, but I, I was in R and B. You know, just some smooth, just just I would keep my heart rate up, just keep my heart rate steady. You know, move around, just just light light work, and then eventually I'll start I start having the music as um as my work gets more intense. You know. Yeah, totally makes sense on that end of things, man. But I want to be mindful of your presumably busy schedule leading into this big fight here so just in being mindful of your time is there anything you kind of want to add as a parting thought as we're wrapping things up here man yeah man uh i was want to say man if you guys can follow me on instagram at Tony johnson jr um watch the fight it's, it's gonna be a good one i don't i don't expect it to go very long um we're both heavy hitters and we're both hungry you know i know i have the belt but i want to keep the belt i'm gonna keep it and i'm gonna do what i gotta take do whatever i gotta do to, to keep it so there will be blood, so don't, don't miss it. <laughs> it's an incredible fight and completely understandable why it's top in the marquee of ACA 122. Heavyweight championship on the line, April 23rd. Thanks for the time ahead of this fight here, champ. And yeah, just best of luck with the remaining part of the training preparations. And have a good rest of your day too there, man. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your time. You have a good day.